Hello again, guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today's been a, a busy day here for me. This is my third video and I wanted to debut it tonight because today is the day that Saturn enters Aquarius with Jupiter following in a few days. And then, of course, we have the great conjunction. So if you're looking up at the sky right now, you will see Saturn and Jupiter. In fact, I was just outside and I got a pair of binoculars and I was looking at them. They're literally just a little bit east and south of where the moon sits. And they're so close together right now. It's really beautiful. It's magical. It's kind of a once in a lifetime experience. What's happening? This great conjunction at zero degrees in Aquarius on December 21st. And so I wanted to dedicate this video, although I'll be doing a dedicated video for the Saturn and Jupiter great conjunction on December 21st as well. But this one, I wanted to focus on Saturn in Aquarius. This is actually a really positive placement for Saturn. Saturn feels at home in Aquarius, and it's going to be the start of shifting the way that we socialize, shifting the way we interact with one another, shifting societal structures, which is so damn exciting. And it's exactly what we need right now. It's exactly what we've been preparing for all of 2020. So Saturn stays in a sign for about two and a half to three years. Okay, so we can expect this for the next two and a half to three years of just smooth sailing. Saturn is one of the heavy hitters of the Zodiac. I call him the granddaddy planner. He's the taskmaster planet. He wants you to take your time. He likes you to do things not quickly or swiftly, but gradually. And then you are so rewarded when he leaves your sign. So for you guys that are Aquarius, sun in Aquarius, um, moon in Aquarius, North node in Aquarius, South node in Aquarius. I know I've read for a lot of uh, Aquarius, South node and North nodes recently. In fact, I just did one the other day. This is going to significantly affect you and significantly propel you into action. And you guys are the change makers of society. My big, my oldest brother is an Aquarius born on Valentine's Day. Change maker, you guys are so necessary, so needed right now on this planet. So I'm really excited for all of my Aquarius energies out there to really enjoy this transit. And then of course the rest of us will be following not so far behind you guys. So since this is a conjunction in the sky, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's go ahead, I just ate my hair. Let's go ahead and start off with the Moonology deck and let's see what we have. All right. So asking for assistance from above, asking for assistance from the Archangels, asking for assistance from Archangel Michael to create this sphere of loving protection and guidance around this reading, myself and everyone watching. And please allow me to be a pure vessel of intention, clarity, kindness, compassion, activism, love, acceptance, hope, and faith calling on my guides, calling on my light team. I have a full light team calling on my star seed family, my ancestors to assist me in this reading. And just please allow me to set my ego aside to come through with the messages that most need to be heard right now by anybody watching. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your commitment is being tested. Okay. We are kind of in this. We're not quite in the first quarter moon. We just stepped out of the new moon on Monday but we're headed towards this first quarter moon. So our commitment is being tested. It's like, can you see the big picture is what I feel with this. Can you see that there is something more that is playing out behind the scenes? Can you trust it? Can you have faith that it's going to work out in your favor? A lot of us have had our divine connections tested this year in major, major ways by the absence of the counterpart, the absence of the connection, the absence of the intimacy in the 3D, the absence of conversation, the absence of, for some of us, almost everything in the 3D, having no idea, being totally blindfolded about what is going on with your person and having to go it alone and having to really step back into this place of deep faith of what is it that I really believe what is it that I know to be true in my heart? But not only that, we're also being tested 
in the ways in which we trust that everything is working out, that we are actually jumping to our highest timeline. Because this year has looked like a shit show if you look at it in the external, you know, from the external lens. It's looked like everything is actually falling apart when everything is actually coming together. So do you have faith that everything is working out for our highest good and leading us to our highest timeline? So Saturn is going, you know, Saturn's a heavy hitter and Saturn's coming in to really... Uh, yeah, you're going to need faith while Saturn comes into Aquarius. But again, it's an easy energy. It's a lot easier than Saturn being in Capricorn where Saturn's been. It's an easier energy. It's a more flowing energy. Um, there's an energy of peace. There's an energy of understanding. There's an energy of people coming together, oneness. And then you add Jupiter to the mix, and Jupiter is the planet of good luck, expansion, abundance, travel, and it's just beautiful, beautiful things coming with this conjunction. Um, a lot of you have, your sense of self-worth has been tested, especially with Saturn and Capricorn. Again, it, it was kind of an abrasive energy. Um, for a lot of us, we would have felt that collectively and individually. So a challenging three years here leading up to 2020, ta challenging two years leading up to 2020 with Saturn and Capricorn. So you're being reminded that you're good enough. You're being reminded that you are enough, period. That you don't have to do anything. That you don't have to be anything. You don't need to change anything about yourself. You don't need to change the way you look or you don't need to go and get another degree. You don't need to buy more clothes. That all of those things are just us trying to fill the void. And it's same thing with food. When we reach for food, it's like I'm learning this because um, when I came out of really challenging situation that my previous channel was based off of, I started again in 2017. I started everything over basically my whole life. And I started this sort of night eating. I eat so healthy during the day, smoothies and juices and salads and everything. And then at nighttime, it's like I snack and it's this, it's a, like I know I'm consciously doing it, but the driving factor is subconscious. And so what's happening is there's this energy of um, trying to fill a void, right? And I'm still battling with it, but I'm getting a grip on it. I'm starting to really understand where, like where it's coming from, why it's there. So a lot of you will have been dealing with something uh, similarly and you're realizing, oh my gosh, it's, and if it's not food, maybe you're reaching for a drink, maybe you're reaching for, you know, a buzz of some sort maybe you're reaching for maybe it's shopping for you but whatever it might be or you're just like makeup or like the need to somehow fill yourself up with something with friendships with relationships jumping from one relationship to another that's another way it's like we're trying to fill a void within ourselves and the moment you realize that nothing outside of you can fill that void even if it feels scary even if it feels lonely or empty it's actually the the best thing that could happen because you're coming to terms with where you don't feel like you're enough and where you can fill that void and fill that hole for yourself. And it's extremely empowering once you get to that level. So know that you're good enough. This is Virgo. Virgo can be uh, critical. Virgo can be a very analytical. Virgo can be very logical. So this can be definitely coming from the head and, and not from the heart. So just keep that in mind. And then we have the energies here of nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon, things are changing, right? And you see this chaotic sea here, the rough sea, and then hold your vision. Then we have the mountains. So I feel like some of you are craving mountain energy or scenery, and some of you are craving the ocean right now, and maybe you're unable to get to either because of you know, the weather where you are, or just because of all these restrictions with travel and everything, trying to keep us you know, inside our houses. And so things have been challenging and you're, you know, this is fixed moon and mutable moon. So these are like opposing energies. So it's like, hold your vision, but then nothing's yet set in stone. So what I see, what I take from this is the universe is saying, hold your vision because nothing is yet set in stone. So you can still, you hold your vision, hold your vision, hold your vision, ignore the 3D, whatever you're seeing in the 3D is not reality. Ignore, 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 cancel, clear, delete. Only focus on what it is that you wish to see come to fruition happiness, health, friendship, love, union, whatever that is, money, a windfall of money, a new job, moving, relocating, whatever that might be, hold that vision 
because the energies are actually ripe for change right now. They're ripe to allow you to shift your mindset. So if you've been stuck in this negative mindset, which many of us have, we've been stuck in this place of a lack of faith, right? We've been stuck in this place. Our commitment has been tested. So we haven't been able to see clearly. We haven't been able to think clearly. It's been muddied. It's been foggy. You can see the foggy energy there. And you're like, I'm not quite sure if I believe in this connection anymore. I'm not quite sure if I believe in twin flames anymore. I'm not quite sure. All of those things are acceptable. You're allowed to challenge. You're allowed to test. You're allowed to question things. That's a healthy mind. So you guys know that I'm getting away from the label twin flames and you, you'll still hear me say it just because I'm used to saying it, but I'm going to be, you know, using the term counterpart, you know, divine counterpart. Um, or your person because the label twin flames is starting to feel restricted restricting especially as we move into this more kind of flowy energy this um, all-inclusive loving energy of Aquarius which dares you to be different it dares you to see beyond labels right Aquarius says see beyond labels see beyond sex sexuality see beyond religion see beyond culture see beyond the you know the identifying factors just see the person, just see the soul. So I really feel like with all of this doubt that feminines have had creeping in, and it hasn't been like, oh, well, just a little bit here and there. It's been a hell of a lot. Okay. It's been a hell of a lot. And we've had a lot of doubt creeping in that's made us question if we're on this journey, why we're on this journey. What does this all mean? Why am I here? And now we're coming back to this place of realizing, oh yeah, right. I am on this journey because I came here to assist with uplifting humanity, with the changing of the guard, so to speak. It's the changing of the guard as we move into the age of Aquarius. It's the downfall of the regime, okay? We came here for this. And that's when you realize that your role is so much bigger than just what is the divine masculine doing? And look, I'm not faulting readers who are, are continuing to do that because I'm not saying that I'll never do one of those readings again. I think it'll be fun to check in maybe once a month or twice a month, but I'm not going to focus on them because, and, and it's sometimes they come in and bombard me with messages, guys, and I'm going to have to relay those messages because it's the only way for me to really release those messages. Divine masculines will come to me. My divine masculine will come to me and they have a message for you and I need to get that message out. But remembering that it's also coming from the masculine energy within you. So I will be doing those messages. So it's not to fault the readers who are deciding to do those messages. It's just, I feel like they're overdone at this point. It feels like it's being like overcooked and it's not assisting us and it's stunting us. And in fact, it's stunted my growth. I can feel that the last few months it's felt like really heavy. But when I do readings like this and I focus on astrology and I focus on energy and I focus on um, you know, the universe's messages that uh, so graciously flow through me, that's when I feel at ease. That's when I feel energized. And that's when I can do three readings a day for you guys. So hold your vision, Divine Feminines, because things are still changing. Um, let's find out with Saturn moving into Aquarius. Tell us about the masculine energy within us. Your dreams need a practical plan. That's such masculine energy, right? It's Taurus is an earth sign. So it's about bringing this down into the 3D. Your dreams need a practical plan. So while you have, you know, you this dreamer energy feminine and the feminine energy is a dreamer energy, right? It's like dreaming of this world where everyone, you know, where love is, is the commodity. Love is the commodity instead of money. And dreaming of this world where everyone can coexist that's feminine energy. That's why it's so necessary on this planet because it gives birth to new ideas and inspirations as well as, of course, physical birth. That's why we're all here. Um, so the masculine energy inside of us, right? That masculine side of us right now is like rearing to go, wanting to take action, wanting, but you're still, again, remember what I said earlier today, guys, we're not in the action phase yet. So take it easy, take a step back, and plan. This is the time to plan. What else does the masculine energy need right now within us? Ooh, 
a personal issue reaches resolution. Full moon in Cancer. So there, there's some emotional healing going on right now, guys. I like that. Um, water, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. So there's some emotional energies that have been addressed. Um, personal issues. So that'll be different for all of you as this is a collective reading. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. As always, guys, that is my rule of thumb for every reading. My reading is someone else's readings. Um, even if I'm the only reader you follow, because a lot of you have said that, just take what resonates and leave what doesn't, because we don't want to try to make something fit. My messages are for the collective when I'm doing these. If you want a personal message, you know, then you contact me and we do a personal reading. But definitely something that has been plaguing you or bothering you is going to reach resolution and it's going to be more peaceful from here on out. Cancerian energy is connected to the mother connected to the womb it's connected to um existence right it's it's connected to fertility on uh, creative fertility physical fertility it's connected to the home it's connected to the creature comforts and um when cancer energy is out of whack we feel codependent we feel like we need somebody so this is like healing uh resolving codependency healing maybe a personal relationship in your life um, which is beautiful energy. So that's going to start to open up avenues and portals in your personal relationships. And then a win-win outcome is forecast. So we have the scales of justice here, Libra energy. Justice being served. This came in in an earlier reading because I was drawn to these cards today. So um, let's see. Yeah, why not? Let's do another moon deck, Queen of the Moon Oracle. Win-win outcome is forecast. So this is once again saying that this is that promise that everything is actually working out. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Okay, so everything is working out. It's not the end, feminines. It's not the end. And you know that. You know it's not the end of the road because you know you still have things to work out on this planet. You know that you still have, um, you know, words to say to your person. And it's not the end, okay? realizations coming through yeah i can see that so you're going to be thinking clearly and seeing clearly i think i mentioned that earlier yeah i did because remember we had your commitments being tested but you're going to be seeing things in a in new light a different light a brighter light realization so it's like you're unlocking the key to this pathway this this doorway uh of possibilities and this realization that nothing is actually ever set in stone, that time is an illusion, that you're never actually like, you, it's like this realization feminine that you haven't done anything wrong. Your masculine hasn't done anything wrong. Your person, right? Your counterpart, um, that no one in your life has ever done anything wrong. Um, I'm saying this from a higher perspective. We were all playing our roles. We all were playing our roles. The person who was nasty to you, the person who was the bully, the person who was verbally abusive, they were playing their roles. And when we can see things from that higher perspective, we can forgive. A, we can forgive. B, we can move on. Um, and C, we can see the bigger picture and see why things happen so a lot of realizations are coming in for feminines now really about um why things have had to pan out the way they have in your connection and in your entire life yeah there's assessment going on this is definitely saturn energy saturn wants you to like the, the planning energy the taurus energy saturn wants you to assess assessment wants you to assess the situation um this is not about doing something irrationally or doing something without thinking. This is Saturn is the energy of waiting, planning, plotting, and thinking. You will be rewarded for your efforts. So right now, the feminines, you guys are having realizations. You guys are assessing the situation. You're taking things in. You've got your binoculars there. Funny, that's exactly what I was doing like 20 minutes ago, looking at Saturn and Jupiter in the sky with my binoculars. Uh, I wasn't in a hot air balloon. That would have been cool. <laughs> would have been a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> so, oh, guys, I can do Matthew McConaughey. Hold on. Hold on. I do impressions. Okay. Um, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, 
okay, so back to, back to the reading. So yes, feminines having realizations, major epiphanies, major like a windfall of knowledge, a windfall of um, aha moments is hitting you right now. And that's opening portals, it's opening pathways, it's opening doors for you where they would have appeared closed before. So things are really starting to open up right now. Uh, making the assessments so that you can better qualify who and what deserves to be in your life from this point forward. Growth. Yeah, Saturn will definitely bring growth. Saturn, whether you like it or not, Saturn will grow you. Saturn will stretch you past your comfort zone, way out of your comfort zone. So expect to be stretched out of your comfort zone. Feminines, uh, masculines watching, expect to be, you know, light seed, light workers, light seeds. I just said light seeds. I like it. If you're a light worker and a star seed, you're a light seed. Perfect. I love that. I think I just made something up. I just made that up. It's going to be trending now. Hashtag light seed. Um, <laughs> and so you're going to be growing and shifting. There's going to be some growing pains. Anytime Saturn is hanging out anywhere, there will be growing pains in that area. But it's definitely social revolution, right? We are coming together. We are working together, ushering in this golden age. We're all growing. So when you grow together, it's less painful because you have people on your side who are doing it with you. What do feminines need to be aware of with Saturn and Aquarius? Protection. I'm going to clarify that. Beauty. Yeah, you're going to be seeing your beauty. I feel like we're going to start that process of aging backwards that I've been talking about because it feels like we aged forward by like a decade in 2020. It feels like every month we age like a year. It's crazy, right? And so um, you're going to be seeing the beauty in things again, feminine. You're going to be, the world's going to seem brighter. The world is, you're going to be hearing the birds sing and noticing the colors, noticing the boldness, the brightness of the colors in the world. You're going to be appreciating the small things, the finer details, but also appreciating your beauty, being less hard on yourself, being more accepting of yourself. Now, let's talk for a minute about protection. You know what? I'm gonna pull out the Sacred Destiny Oracle. Oh, that's interesting. I just saw protection. Wow, I just saw, I was going to shuffle the cards and I just saw protection. Okay, tell me about protection. Okay, really? <laughs> Protect the cards, Sarah. <laughs> Protect the cards from falling. Tell me about protection. Ooh, okay. They're showing me. I just saw truth. There's a face in the clouds. It's like, if truth was a person, what would that look like? Who would that person be in your life? I feel as though a lot of us have been protected from the truth in 2020 because it would have been too harsh for us. It would have been too challenging, too painful for us. So our counterparts, higher selves and us, we protected ourselves okay they protected us they stayed away and we protected ourselves um there was a storm brewing and we were able to stay dry right we were able to stay under the tree and the lightning didn't hit us it's like the storm was happening somewhere else like in the masculine's world and we were here protected we like we were close but we were also far away and and there's no way the universe was going to let us be affected by this storm because it was so intense. It was such an intense storm. And it was definitely one the masculine had to go through on their own, I'm hearing. Um, so let's see. Let's see what else. Tell me more, Spirit, about this protection and truth. Tell me more, please. Clearly. Protection. Okay, I just saw new beginnings. Okay, 
Yeah, okay. It's like we were being protected. Um, it's like the only way the new beginnings could occur is if we were able to shut out, like literally walk away, shut out the past. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness and release. Okay, so it's time to forgive yourself. It's time to forgive anyone who has wronged you, if you're up for that. It will free you, it will release you, it will release the burden and the heaviness. And feminines, it's also time to forgive your counterpart, to, you know, to release the burden of anger or blame, okay? Um, release the fear surrounding the connection. What if they never come back? Well, what if they do come back? What if the worst thing happens? Well, what if the best thing happens? What if they never call me again? What if they call you tomorrow? What if they call you right now? What if they never leave the karmic partner? What if they've already left the karmic partner? So it's like shifting of thinking, releasing those stinking thoughts, rele releasing those negative thoughts that only lead to more fear. Fear leads to fear. Fear never leads to freedom. Fear is the opposite of freedom, right? Fear takes over the mind. So forgive yourself, forgive the universe for the path that it's had you on and for this trajectory that's felt very painful, very lonely at times. Release so that you can, you know, this is like, this is the perfect time, fall, to release um, just the energy that doesn't serve you, okay? We can't take it with us into 2021. We can't, there's no room for it energetically. There's a lot of potential. So from this place of protection comes potential, right? From this place of like the four of swords energy, just protecting oneself, being in the womb, being in the cocoon, okay? You were being carried in 2020, feminines. You were, you were being carried and protected, okay? Your guides, your ancestors, your star seed family, the Galactic Federation, they were protecting you. And now it's like your potential is being born out of this protection. So that's really beautiful. So from this place of protection comes great, great potential. This is turning out to be the best reading, I think, of the day, in my opinion. I'm going to finish with the Soul Truth Awareness deck, and I would like a message, please, for the feminines. I'm going to go watch a movie with my nephew. We bought him a new BMX bike today. My parents and I went halvesies for Christmas. So he's 16, and he's got a new BMX bike that's being put together that we'll pick up tomorrow. So that's really exciting. Okay. What do the feminines most need to know at this time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. This came up earlier. Do I believe I am worthy? Look at that beautiful feather. Do I believe I'm worthy? Do you believe that you're worthy? Feminine, masculine. Do you believe that you are worthy of love, of abundance, of success, of luck, of laughter, of joy, of freedom? Do you believe you're worthy of living a good life? Do you believe you're worthy of being unstuck, coming out of fear, freeing yourself? You are worthy, you are deserving, you are loved. Start seeing the divine beauty within you and go out and claim the life you have dreamt up. Your crown has been bought and paid for. Put it on your head and wear it, Maya Angelou. It's already there, you just forgot. Pick it up, put it back on, wear it proudly, loudly and proudly. For a big goal or dream you have, ask yourself, do I feel worthy of this? And the mantra is, I am worthy of it all. Write that down, say that out loud. I am worthy of it all. I am worthy of it all. Say it like you mean it. And you'll, you'll know, you'll know, because you'll be able to tell, like, oh, I didn't really mean that. I could hear it in my voice. You'll know. Okay, so definitely feminines working on that solar plexus issue, working on believing in yourself, working on that sacred self-love, that sacred self-contract, which says, I came here because I am worthy. Just, you're inherently worthy. You don't have to do anything or be anything to 
deserve that worthiness or to get those credentials you already are you were born worthy so i send you guys so much love power and protection strength joy abundance love success i think i said love twice that's okay i can never get enough love have a beautiful night guys and i'll see you tomorrow